Well, the McDonald family plus one, <laughs> plus one is on their way to uh, Amy's dad's place, Lyle's place, uh, to have some breakfast, catch up. Uh, yes, we are. It is our last trip, our last leg of this uh, Christmas season. My favorite time of the year. Only a few more days left. Um, still got lots to go on, going on. We have horses racing throughout the week. Uh, I'm going back to Pennsylvania for Thursday and Friday Friday afternoon, but we'll be leaving immediately. Ah, shh, shh, shh. We'll be leaving immediately after race two because I want to make it back for our Christmas party Friday night at Mohawk. It's about a five-hour drive from the meadows to. Um, oh, goody. Uh, it's about a five-hour drive from the Meadows back to uh, Mohawk, which gives me plenty of time. I'll be there before 7 p.m. on Friday. Anyway, um, did want to talk to everybody about what went on yesterday. What you forget? I forgot a present. Yeah, Mommy forgot a present at Christmas. Um, I did want to talk to everybody about what went on yesterday. I, I guess... Uh, a decent day, different kind of day. Um, I think both horses in Ohio race good. We'll talk about them in a minute. But we'll kick off our video talking about Mohawk. Obviously, it was it was very nice to see Locatelli kind of shake out of that shell um, as we head into the the heart of the winter, into the winter season. It was good to see him shake out of the shell and, and get going forward. Uh, we started the day with White Tiger, and I think he did everything he could. You know, I had a uh, a nice conversation with Joe, and Joe has been an owner of White Tigers, I believe, since day one. Right here? Yeah. Same as uh, same as Amy and I and a number of other people. Now, Joe uh, is always concerned. The tie, is he tired? You know, he's raced almost 35 times now. And, and my take on it is the same thing. I, t I told Joe, and I'll tell everybody, seven-year-olds are not like two-year-olds or three-year-olds. They'll tell you when they need a little rest. So I defer to the people that are around Tiger every day. I know when I walked in the barn the other day, he was bouncing in a stall. He's put really good weight on. He looks great. Dominic has him in great shape. So he was in good spirits in a stall. That doesn't always mean that he's not a little tired on the track. So I simply asked Chris Christopheru and Dominic and even James, hey, White Tiger, do you think he needs a rest? And, and Chris said, Anthony, you know, the track was hard as a rock yesterday. I just don't think, you know, racing against the open horses on a hard track was his thing. You know, combined with just leaving them off the gate and going around with them. No, he said, I don't I don't think he's tired. Yes, honey. I didn't lock the door. No one. How do you lock it? I'm Well, is your dad not going to be home soon, Claire? That's Claire, by the way. Our, my niece. <laughs> um, Do you just wave it, your hand in there? Pardon? Do you just wave your hand So, like, if you go into the front door, so yep. you go in and then you're going to um, come out, and then that keypad thing, you're going to be hands backwards and just hold it. And okay. And it will sound like it's locking. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, Continue so, oh, thank you, Claire. <laughs> so, uh, White Tiger was... Um, I thought he was as good as he could be, he really. Tiger make, uh, did White Tiger win? No, he's fifth. What but, the? Hey, you, but he was, <laughs> but he raced pretty good. He didn't, you know, those are, it's tough being in there. When you know you're, it's the same thing, it's a wasted start. And it's hard when you have those upper condition horses that, you know, a horse like Tiger, he's not quite an open horse, but when he does good, that's where he ends up. Now, you know exactly what's going to happen after yesterday. White Tiger's going to drop down in Locatelli. You know, a horse said, You know Locatelli. Uh, I you. Yes, silly. A horse like Locatelli would have to move up now, which is, to me is just a little unfair. He did well yesterday as the favorite in the backup class. I guess I could, I guess now that I say it, there is some warrant to, uh, there is some merit to, to going up, but it just seems like he hasn't done quite as well as he should to be forced up into the open, but. I'm not the race secretary, and, and I guess if one has to go up and one has to come down, then 
It is what it is. So you know exactly what's going to happen. Locatelli's going to be up in the open next week. And White Tiger's going to be down in the 24,000 class. Going back to my original conversation about White Tiger, no, I don't believe he was tired. Chris didn't think he was at all. He said mechanically he was great. He was in good spirits. He did his work well. And he did all the work he could. So he didn't think he was. Dominic said no. He seems fine to him. He said, I am going away. Uh, he's going... He went down. That's how, this is how dedicated Dominic Ladu is, just so everybody knows. He left Saturday after they did work at the burn and drove all the way to Quebec, where his family still is, by the way. Drove all the way to Quebec, celebrated Christmas on Sunday with his family, left Sunday evening and drove all the way back to Ontario because they had all those horses in at Mohawk. Did the horses at Mohawk, and now I believe tomorrow he's going all the way back to Quebec to spend the rest of the week with his family. So the, the dedication from Dominic Ladu is fully on display all the time. And, uh, you know, just a, a tremendous job with the horses. And, and more in regards to White Tiger, he said, no, we could give him a week because he's going to drop down in class anyway, but I don't I don't think he's tired anyway. So that is where it is with the with the aged horses. You'll see a lot of aged horses year over year put in 30 starts, and you'll see gaps throughout their schedules. But they don't need that. Okay, they've raced for 11 months now. Let's shut them down. It's much like you or I. You get in that grind of, of going all the time, going to your work, doing your job. That is your life. Much like it's mine or yours. And, um, you know, there are times when a vacation is warranted, but not always. So that is White Tiger in a nutshell. All gas, no brakes. Raced good. He missed a day or two last week, uh, just weather and whatnot. And I think that really plays a role. You know, when you're racing upwards of your better ability and you're missing a little bit of practice time, right? A little bit of workout time. And I think it shows. I thought he raced well. And, and unfortunately, I think it was a, maybe a missed opportunity because regardless of the fifth or not, he, he'll likely be playing next week. I, that's, I fully believe he will. And he raced well. I'd like to see him race well again next week. And he's not. He's not. He's fine with me. Um, up next was Resolute Bay. He just didn't get off the gate well. They said, you know, he was acting a little lethargic after the race. You know, this guy, he may be a little sick, but he needs a little bit of a shake-up. He's going to come to Pennsylvania and race at the Meadows um, for at least... And I told Harry, I said, we do have a horse named Delicious Stone that fits the numbers or nothing. Now, we'll see how he does with Lorne on... Uh, We'll see how he does with Lauren. What did they draw for? It must be Friday. We'll see how he does with Lauren on Friday. But assuming that he's like third or fourth, we can race him and the non as a two, four, six in Mohawk. And at that point, race Resolute Bay in the same types of races in, uh, in Pennsylvania. We can switch them after a little bit. That keeps Resolute Bay and the horses that race for a person less than 12 or 15 or whatever it is, last five, four, six, whatever, eligible to that class, and it allows a little bit of a reset for Delicious Stone. So we can see if that works out also, um, switching those horses out, and there may be other horses there too that aren't Delicious Stone. But first and foremost, Resolute Bay, we're going to get him over to the meadow, see if we can spark him back up. Maybe a little bit like we did with Nothing But a Dreamer. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot, just sometimes a, just a new scenery, you know, a new situation, a new group of horses to really allow the horses to, to snap out of a funk that they're in. And I think that's what we're going to do with uh, Resolute Bay. And in regards to uh, the last two that raced in Ontario, so that was Tiger, who I thought raced okay. Gas, who I thought raced okay. Uh, Resolute Bay obviously didn't race well yesterday. And then we go to the last two, where Carter and Locatelli. Carter, he just went around. That was tough. Too t the reason Carter Michael Dio is leaving, and he is going to Pennsylvania for his next start, that's unfair to him. Right? It's unfair to have to race a horse with five lifetime wins and is just turning four against Locatelli. Now, if that's the only class for him, so be it. But that's just another reason why he's not staying in Ontario. There's no anger towards the race office. If they couldn't get him in the class below that, fine. But he fits the class Kenobi is in today, our only starter, I believe, today at the Meadows. And he'll race in that class and the next class. And it'll only be after... He could win four times and still never face a Locatelli type horse at the Meadows. So, absolutely a, a little bit of a switch was needed in that regard. So, again, you guys know I told you a uh, little bit of a stressful time for me right now in the sense that I want to, I know, I want to uh, look at what horses 
aren't maybe making it, making the cut, and move them on. Which horses maybe aren't suited for the jurisdiction they're in, and swap them out with other horses, and bring our, our two-year-olds turning three back into the barn in Ohio and in Ontario. So that is where we're at right now. Um, Carter was eight. Locatelli was a winner and looked very good. I was so happy to see him come back to life. Um, very, very happy to see him come back to life. Now, we've seen this movie before. I was a little disappointed, as you were, with the way Chris drove him last week. Got away at the back and he finished up okay. But truthfully speaking, that is the whole reason that he raced good yesterday. We saw it with James last year a couple of times with Loki. We like, geez, just seems like he under-raced him. But then the horse came right back out and, and came to life. And he needed that win very, very badly. So it was great to see him get there. And, and as I said, uh, you know, we've seen this before. And if it is, historically speaking, if it's the same as it was last year, you'll see Locatelli go on a little bit of a tear now over the next little while. So a very timely victory by Locatelli. And all in all, not a bad day yesterday. Resolute Bay raced so bad. Sure, he was a little bit sick. There was stuff going on with him. And I know this is hard for people to see. You see a vet list and then a bad line. There's nothing lame. There's no lameness issues with with Resolute Bay right now. This is just a, a combination of a lot of things. Yesterday, he might have been a little bit under the weather. You know, he is in a little bit of a funk. I suspect you're going to see Resolute Bay come to life in a big way. His next start, his next start will be at the Meadows uh, in Pennsylvania. Now, we went to Ohio. I was very eager to watch two horses race last night. I waited and waited and waited. Watched the whole post parade. Um, I thought Texan Soprano raced great. I was talking to Scotty yesterday. I hadn't heard from him. I'm like, ah, maybe he was a little miffed that the horse, you know, was fourth. But he, he understands the game, too, and understands that those were open horses. Right? Those, I drove that horse, Obra, Obra, uh, the horse that won the race. I drove him in Pennsylvania. That was the horse I got yelled at for underdriving him. And he won the won the open and a very nice trotter. Won the open yesterday at Northfield. But that is a seasoned veteran, right? These are open horses, not horses that are three coming into stakes at the end of their season up into the open. That's that's a tough ask. And I thought the Tech Song Soprano looked very good. And one of our clients, Laura, had said, you know, can he come to the Meadowlands? You might see him sometime at the Meadowlands, but he's a little small to be at the Meadowlands, especially at the end of his three-year-old year. This is the time of year where, and I said this to Scotty and I said this to everybody, I'd like to see him race right through till April and then give him a break. Then we have him super fresh for the end of the summer. The last thing we've never had, unless you have either a four-year-old coming back with not a lot of wins or money, or a really, really, really talented four-year-old, I just assume skip July, August, and the first part of September with our three-year-olds that have turned four. It's just a very, very tough transition for them. So I would like to race him right up through March or April if he wants to, if he can, and then shut him down and give him some time off. So you'll likely see Tech Song Soprano, as I originally posted, show up at Yonkers, and I think Scott and Megan will love this horse. He is a really, really nice horse to be around, and some of the reports I heard from him, I haven't seen any of that yet. Somebody said, ah, his left hind bothers him a little bit after the race. They never found out why. I've never seen anything wrong with this horse anywhere, right? A little hot at the gate. Perfect. Seemed great. Hunter did a great job with him last night. Followed, attacked down lane. You gotta understand, they get a horse in the passing lane in Northfield. Not a lot of room from that start of the passing lane to the wire. He picked up one horse and was closing in on the other ones. I thought the horse raced tremendous yesterday. And then, of course, we went to Unbeatable Camp. I was so upset to see him make a break, and I don't really know. When you see a horse going up to the gate making a break, to me, that's a horse that didn't want to participate last night. And a horse coming off a break and winning and racing so tremendously, I have to ask myself, are his feet bothering him? Is something bothering him last night that would that would make him not want to participate? These are the things that we'll go over today. We'll do a little diagnostics on him. Now, of course, the most frustrating part is he now has to qualify. Here's a horse that has really been pretty sure-footed. The break in the meadows was as much my fault. I refused to move him and was right up on top of everybody. And when they come back to me, he just boxed his gate up and made a break. That wasn't him making a break. That was me. I refused to move him and he wanted, at least he thought he wanted to move at that point. And it was more a break out of frustration um, and just put a step in than anything else. But last night, no real reason to make that break. Going up to the gate, Jason didn't do anything wrong. I watched him in the post parade. He jogged him through the post parade. So it's not like he walked him and the horse was just hot and wiry going to the gate. I can't really tell you why he made that break. And I didn't talk to Jason. I didn't want to bother him after the race and make him think that I was like angry or upset that the horse made a break. I could clearly see it was not his fault. So 
what happened? I'm not sure. I'll have Dr. Latessa uh, go over him today. I spoke to Jason last night. We were hoping that there's so many different rules now in different jurisdictions. We make a break in the mud, it's not counted as a break, but a good track is not considered the mud either. Where you see the line that says GD. Uh, say SY, sloppy. So, um, Unbeatable Camp does, sadly, does have to qualify. Uh, whether that happens at the Meadows or, or Northfield, if we take him back to the Meadows, it will be to race him there. I thought he was in really tough last night. Now, the winner ran off, right? Ran off. But he was close to being second and was a really good fourth after that break. So, again, not a bad race, just a, a frustrating break from him last night. So, all, all in all, an okay day. We had a very, very good win from Locatelli. We had a decent mile from all gas, no brakes. We had a decent mile from White Tiger. We had a decent mile from uh, Tech Song Soprano. And we had a, an unfortunate but a, a pretty good mile all in all from uh, from our boy uh, Kemp. So with that, uh, that's a look at what went on yesterday. I'm not going to be at the Meadows today. Uh, I believe Sean Johnson is going to drive Kenobi for us. Oh, a little update on Kenobi. Uh, I didn't realize how well Kenobi would get over a half, and I think, uh, for, for me personally, I know there'd be a couple people that messaged me and said, where will Kenobi be racing? And I said, likely Pennsylvania and Ohio. I'm thinking he probably should go back to uh, go back to Yonkers, and maybe even a horse like Saratoga, Yonkers. He could do very, very well down there. And it's not, I don't have a problem with Kenobi at all. I was torn of sending him to Mohawk, but I didn't really want to put him in that that claiming class because we paid 55 for him. I just think there's a wise place to race him and that would be Yonkers and or Saratoga. So I had reached out to Mark Beckwith. He was going to get back to me today um, with whether, you know, where he thought that maybe he could race in the new year and what he could do. Uh, I can't, this isn't going to be an immediate move. It'll be uh, two, three weeks down the road probably. But as I say that, um, whether he goes to Megan and races at Yonkers or um, or down to Saratoga uh, in anticipation. Hey, Addy Bear. Or down to down to uh, Saratoga in anticipation of even a Plain Ridge. I'm not really sure. I'm just trying to make sure that we have a full time class for a horse at Kenobi. Carter Michael Deal is coming over for that class next week, and he is uh, a better horse than, than Kenobi. I want to make sure that we have the best horse in every class that we can have them in. And when I look around at the entire playing field for Kenobi, it just makes sense. Oh, I see it. It just makes total sense that we look at uh, if he's going to get around a half as well as, surprisingly, as well as he looks like he is, then he should be uh, Yonkers, Saratoga, down that way also. It's a good fit for us there. Um, and before somebody says Northfield, with him having five wins, he would have to race in the claiming class or in a... Uh, a graduated condition race, which is going to be tough for him too. There is a very good spot for him out east. So for the people that get in and maybe don't have your New York licenses, don't worry about it. You're going to have two or three weeks before we really make a, a firm decision on this. But for right now, I just the more I look at everything, as I said, the entire playing field, the more it looks to me like you'd be really well suited for there. So uh, nothing you have to worry about today. We can deal with it over the next few weeks. Oh, I missed the... I'm sure we can go around the block here. Oh, good call. So uh, we have arrived at Starbucks en route to Lyle and Shelley's place. We'll be there soon. I will talk to all of you very, very soon. Uh, why does it say no exit here? Are you going to go through the driving path? Yeah. You know what you want, Claire? Pardon? You know what you want here. You finish this. Yeah. So we're going to finish our video, take our Starbucks order, and then be done for the 27th of December. Good luck to all my partners on Kenobi today. Sean Johnson will take over the, land, the reins with him. I will be in Pennsylvania on Thursday afternoon for Crantini and uh, Enzo Aguayo. The only bad news is we did get their blood back and their livers are high. So as much as I said, you know, back, Addy, as much as I said, back in short notice, they'll be great. I do have my concerns about tomorrow. It's nothing that is scratchable. But it is something that I know in my head and I'm going to have to drive them in a little more protective way, a little more conservative way uh, tomorrow. And then Friday we have Stay Close and Patrick to Piranha. Neither will be driven conservatively. This Well, maybe Patrick, but definitely not Stay Close. And then I'm leaving as soon as I get off the track to come right back to race in, uh, not to race, to, uh, 
to meet and greet everybody at our Christmas party in Ontario 2023. That should be a lot of fun at Mohawk Raceway. Anyway, uh, our day is underway and it's a rainy, miserable day here. Is this Collingwood? In Collingwood, Ontario. You know what though? Could always be worse. It's still been a great Christmas season. Didn't you have a wonderful Christmas, Amy? What was your favorite present? I will talk to you all very soon. Take care, everybody.